What is up, Kawasaki Ninja 400 fam? Today, we are finally installing these $65 Amazon rear sets. Uh, from what I've been told, these are basically uh, knockoffs to uh, Driven Racing's rear sets that they make. But these are the anodized racing or anodizing racing, whatever. I don't know. I, it's an Amazon brand. They make an exhaust for the 400 as well. Um, I've heard some good things about them. I've heard some bad things about them, but let's jump into this install. As you can see, it positions the pegs a little higher, but also more towards the rear, giving you a more adjustable riding position. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me put all these things together. All you really got to do is go by the directions here for the most part, and I'll give you some pointers along the way, but you can kind of use these as a reference. First things first, you got to take these two Allen bolts out. We're starting out on the shifter side here. Once those two Allen bolts are removed, you need to remove your shift linkage. The little part where the rubber boot is, that needs to stay on the bike. The linkage that comes with the shifter will screw into that directly. Now it takes a little bit of finagling, it's a little bit of a pain, but you can get that shift linkage in there. One thing that I did notice that was wrong on the directions, the bike in the directions appears to be a 300 or some foreign bike. I don't think these rear sets were designed for the 400. So what I've done here is I flipped the shifter upside down because as you can see, the stock shifter actually pushes and pulls rather than pulling and pushing, which is how it would be if it was set up the way the directions were. Now we go to the other side. We want to remove the two Allen bolts that are connected to the master cylinder first and then we can remove the two that are on the bike. Once you've got those out, then you need to remove your brake sensor, which just has a little nut on the bottom. Then you can remove the linkage. This little piece here of the linkage on the factory brake needs to be moved over to the new part so that you can screw it back on to the master cylinder as seen here. Once you get it up on there a little ways, you can just tighten that down with a wrench and adjust it accordingly. Up next, we want to put this spring on. I think they should have came with a bolt or something, but you can attach it to this bolt up here. It's kind of a pain. I would say it's probably the most difficult thing in the entire process, but it is doable. Then you take these little spacers and go ahead and attach your master cylinder, and then you can run that spring up there to one of those bolts. As you can see here, I finally got the spring on after it finally had gotten dark on me. It took me quite a while to get it on there. Once that's on, then you can put your brake sensor back on. And then connect the spring from the brake sensor to that same little slot. Now I had to stretch my spring a little bit. You can test it out. Once you get it on the bike, just push the brake and watch the brake light and see if it comes on when it's supposed to. If not, then you can either stretch that spring out or tighten it up a little bit. Up next, we just put our two Allen bolts, hold it onto the bike, and we're ready to go. And of course, you can see it was pretty dark when I finished this install. So I came back the next day and did a couple of shots so you can see what it looks like in the daylight. All right, there we go. Let's go for a test ride. All right, we're out on the bike. It's a little bit dirty right now, so I apologize for that. Uh, this Texas weather, I mean, you could wash it one day to look just like that again the next day. So uh, I'm kind of just waiting for the pollen season to blow through, and then I'll start trying to keep the thing spotless. But we're out riding on our $65 Amazon rear sets that we just installed and uh, I gotta say I really like them despite the uh, you know the little downsides to the way they fit um, I think that uh, that shift lever 
if uh, the bearings are all pressed to one side, I think if you took that lever and pressed those bearings out and then put them in the other side, then you could flush mount that one bolt and that would eliminate that problem and that would really be the only thing that I really had a problem with. Uh, other than maybe the spring on the brake side, it was uh, pretty difficult to get up to that spot. Really, they just need to... Uh, you know include a little screw and i mean if you really wanted to if you had the time and the equipment and and i i do I have the equipment i just didn't have the time um you could probably um drill and tap a little screw to put on the back side of that so that you could attach that spring without having to go up to that notch that i went to but uh, i was pretty pressed for time in making this video and to be honest i really was just kind of hoping that it wouldn't be that bad i was hoping it would all just go together just go together the way it's supposed to but you know that's uh not always how it works and if you haven't been watching my videos for a long time i'm not like a long time professional motorcycle rider or motorcycle mechanic i've been working on cars for many 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 years but motorcycles is a new thing i've been riding for just under two years and so this channel was kind of started as a uh, part of my learning experience both in riding and working on bikes and so um, if you're not new here, you already know that most of my install videos are pretty much just done on the spot. I figure out how to install it. Hello. I figure out how to install it and uh, video it as I go. And then if I make mistakes, then I point out those mistakes. You know, this is what I did wrong. Don't do this. So that's kind of how my videos are structured. And so that's the way that this install came about. I was like, hey, 65 bucks on Amazon you know free prime shipping it made it here in like two days uh, i figured hey it's got to be worth trying i'm sure somebody else has saw it and be like hmm, i wonder that's really cheap so you know i had to be the one to try it especially since rear sensor if you buy them from a name brand company you're going to spend anywhere from three to five hundred dollars for a set of them so i would say for 65 bucks it's an extremely good bargain uh, I just wanted to give you some ideas of what it feels like on the bike. Of course, you can't see them right now, but uh, it actually raises the foot peg position just a hair, not a whole lot, just a hair, but then pushes them back. So like your knees are a little farther forward. Um, but my favorite part is really not so much the riding position so much as it's the comfort. Um, I really dislike the Kawasaki pegs because they have those really sharp teeth on them and over time they will dig into your feet and uh, they cause your feet to hurt. They wear your shoes out incredibly fast and of course that can also you know cause your feet to go numb over time which has happened to me several times especially on this bike. So I do feel like these pegs are a lot more comfortable because they're round instead of being, you know, uh, triangular and all jagged and stuff. They're round and I can kind of move my feet around on them freely. That said, they don't feel like they're missing too much grip or anything. Like I don't feel like my foot is gonna slide off the peg. Um, maybe if it got a little, you know, got a little damp maybe, but even then I don't think it would be that bad. Uh, another great thing about uh, these rear sets is the way that the pegs bolt on. Pretty much most aftermarket pegs, as long as it uses that same uh, threading of a bolt, you can just bolt on there, so that gives you more options on pegs, so that's nice. I would even go so far as to say is the brake and the shifter uh, feel a lot more comfortable to me. So I like it. I think it was worth 65 bucks, but that's going to be a personal preference. That just depends on you, the kind of money you're willing to spend, and uh, what level of comfort you would like to reach on your Kawasaki Ninja 400. But that's it for today's video. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Peace.